Hello and welcome to another technical update video. Today we're going to take a look at Hike Vision's new Colour View camera. It's an IPC camera. Comes in a 2 megapixel and a 4 megapixel variant. It's also available in a turret design, which you can see here, and also a bullet design. The main difference between the Colour View camera and a conventional IPC nighttime camera is the traditional infrared um, is replaced with visible, warm uh, white light. Um, we can see here we've got two uh, white light LEDs on the front. This enables the camera to uh, remain in colour 24-7, uh, even in the very, very darkest of environments, as it produces its own visible white light to illuminate the scene. But that's not the, 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 the whole story. The, the Colour View IPC also has very, very uh, advanced low light technology. Got a, a very high aperture lens with an f-stop of 1.0. And it's also got a, an extremely low light sensitive image sensor. Now, the aperture of the lens is a massive factor when it comes to uh, how much light uh, hits the image sensor. As we all know, uh, the, the image is, is dependent on light. Um, the, the pixels on the image sensor are dependent on light to produce the image. So the amount of light that passes through the lens is a massive factor. So to have that such a, a high aperture and a low f-stop is a massive factor uh, in comparison to a traditional sort of a board lens which would be around about f1.6 um, and that can make a massive difference 50 60 70 percent difference in the amount of light that actually passes through and hits the image sensor so the ipc is equipped with with that low light technology this particular unit um, here you would have a, a model number uh, of ds2cd 2347 g1l Certain models will have a U on the end in the turret design. The U means it's got an inbuilt mic, which you can see here. Um, so it's got built-in audio pickup. Obviously everything else is a standard. You've got your fly lead, you've got your PoE, you've got your micro SD and reset under that slot there. So like I said earlier, it is visible uh, white light. Uh, both the turret and the uh, bullet have a range of approximately 30 meters. Um, the light is adjustable on a sensitivity scale as would the infrared be on a traditional camera so you can set exactly when uh, the light comes on at what looks level if you set it to its lowest switch switching point or latest switching point it'll stay color without the white light down to a lux level of approximately 0.0014 lux so it will produce a visible image down to that that uh, lux level before the white light will eventually switch on and illuminate the scene. You can choose not to have the white light enabled so it's working purely off the low light electronics. If you've got enough artificial light around then you don't need the, uh, as much dependency on the white light. As it's visible white light there is there will be a little bit of light pollution from the units when the white light does come on um, but nothing nothing major but obviously it will illuminate the scene in which the lights are obviously pointing. So what we'll do now is we'll, uh, we'll take a look at some of the light settings in the menu of the IPC and then we'll also look at some of the low light performance from this unit and how it compares to a, uh, a conventional um, IPC without any low light technology. Okay, let's quickly have a look at uh, some of the white light settings within the Colour View IPC. If we click on the configuration option at the top of the screen, that'll take us into the camera's menus. Where we want to be is under the system settings tab at the top there's an option there called external device if you click on that you can see the led light settings so they are actually stored in a separate uh, location to where you would normally find your, your light settings for ir conventional ir cameras under external device we can see there we've got an option to enable the supplement light at the top that turns your white light operation on or off we've got the option underneath to actually manually or automatically set the brightness manually allows us to use the ticker bar underneath which has a LED brightness from 0 to 100 obviously the higher the figure the more intense the light will be automatically allows the actual camera to do that itself which is set on a 50 default obviously manual is good because you can set the intensity of your light for the actual distance between the camera and the area in which it's illuminating the actual LED on, you've got two options there, automatic or timing. The auto setting uses the conventional sort of cut filter method, which is on a sensitivity setting and a filtering time. So the sensitivity setting set to four out of the box, that could be set to one, which is a quicker switching of the light, or set to seven, which is the 
longest possible delay LED white light coming on. Obviously, that would be dependent on how how quickly it dark the scene darkens. You know, if there's, if there's uh, a lot of artificial light or a lot of natural light around for longer, then you can put the the, fil the sensitivity setting on a higher figure. Filtering time is the delay in which the actual LED lights come on once the actual sensitivity illumination level is met. It's more a setting for a cut filter operation to protect the mechanics, but obviously it's also used on this particular model as well. So if we go down to image, under the day night settings, you can see there, this is where you would normally find some of the settings we just looked at on a conventional infrared camera, but you, you can see we've still got a day night setting. So it is still possible to manually set the camera in day or night. Day mode will keep the camera in color 24 seven and we'll take advantage of the, uh, the, 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 the visible warm white light. Night mode will switch the camera into mono. And if the white light is enabled, as seen in the previous menu, that will come on and it will stay on permanently. So it's few and far between when you potentially need to use this uh, particular feature, maybe in constant light conditions where the, the light levels are extremely dark over a larger area, you get slightly better sensitivity from a mono image sensor. Uh, than you would over a colour one. So that's a quick look at the, the white light settings within the web front end of the camera. So now let's move on and have a look at some night light performance uh, images of the camera in action. The first image we're going to see is from, uh, not the colour view, but from a, an IP uh, 2.0 plus camera, the DS2CD2343G0. Uh, this particular camera doesn't really have any um, low light uh, capturing capabilities. As you can see from the images, not a lot really to be seen other than a little bit of light at the top of the image, which is from a, a street light um, at the other side of the woods. Uh, the unit has a, uh, an f-stop an f of 1.6, so uh, a lower aperture than the, the color view camera, and also a, a minimum uh, lux level of 0 0.01. This camera relies 100% uh, on infrared, uh, and also obviously an IR cut filter. Uh, what we've got it set to at the moment is to remain in colour and as you can see there's not a lot happening image wise. Uh, so the second image is uh, the colour view camera. Um, as you can see straight away a massive difference between um, the, the colour view and the previous IP 2.0 plus camera. We can obviously, we've got a, a visible uh, well illuminated image, we've got good colour definition, um, we've got visit, you know, total visibility. Um, this is the colour view camera um, basically working without the, the white light enabled, so purely working off um, its light sensitivity capabilities. So again, as mentioned earlier, it's got an f-stop of 1.0, so the aperture is a lot higher. Um, that is such an important factor when it comes to um, uh, capturing uh, images in low light. The more light that can pass through the lens and hit the image sensor, the, uh, the better image you will get. So an f 1.0 lens versus an f 1.6 lens is a massive massive difference uh, in the amount of light that passes through to the image sensor you can see a little bit of noise that would be normal from a low light image that's using purely sensitivity um, the odd pixel that doesn't get, gather a light charge will produce a little bit of noise there is a noise reduction setting which can be adjusted so you can obviously smooth that out and make that a little bit um, less noticeable in the image but as you can see the the, the the image itself is 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 a massive massive improvement on on a non low light specialist camera. Uh, and lastly, we've got the color view camera again with the white light enabled. So this white light will basically come on when the lux level drops below uh, the minimum uh, level that the the camera is capable of on normal conditions. So if you put the switching uh, sensitivity to seven, that would that will keep the Color view camera uh, operating without the white light up until the lowest point, which is 0.0014 lux. When the light level gets to that point or below, the white light will come on uh, and create its own uh, illumination. But again, as you can see, a massive improvement again, much smoother, much crisper, sharper image, um, full color information within the stream, which again is a massive advantage over a mono IR lit uh, image minimal amount of noise now obviously because of the enhanced illumination that the white light is producing and again a very very impressive low light color image from the color view so that's it for this video we hope, hope you found it interesting and um, 
uh, if any additional information on the Colour View cameras can be obtained either from our website or from your account manager. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next vid. Thank you.